Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at automating our stair dimensions, which eh, it is going to end up being somewhat automated. But let me show you what we're working with here. So if you remembered all the previous videos that we've done on stairs, definitely go look at those if you haven't. But what we did in the past was we looked at how we need to document stairs. And there's a number of things that go into documenting stairs and making sure we have typical dimensions and absolutely everything that we need for documentation figured out. So one of the pain points or, and one of the things that's going to have to happen is you're going to have to express how many riders you have, what those dimensions are, how many, what, how many treads you have and those dimensions. And that's going to be something that's consistent with every single view of every single stair. So there's a lot there. If you have lots of stairs, lots of levels, you can see how this adds up. So here's an example of what we might need to uh, get out of a dimension. And in this case, you could do this a hundred ways, but as far as this, what does this mean? It means eight treads at 11 inches equals seven foot four. And that is literally the dimension that is called out here. And that's telling us that, yeah, I have eight of those treads and they're seven feet four total. And then I can move on to my landing, which is this separate dimension. I don't care about that for this video, but what we want to do ultimately is let's call it automate. And it's not a hundred percent automated, but it's automated in that I don't have to do the math and adding up all of this, these dimensions myself, because Revit has done it for us. Let's be honest, it's all here. And so the point is, if I look at this specific stair and not only just this specific stair, but this specific stair run, that's what we really care about. We can see we have all the information here that we need. And yes, we referred to this in the video and we referred to this in making this dimension and overriding this. Um, but that's what we totally want. We want this replaced with this text and this text is all coming from this exact stair run. And so what is that information in this case? Well, it is the fact that I have eight treads and they are making up uh, obviously 11 inches and that's going to give us a seven foot four. We can see all of our information in the actual stair itself and in the stair parameters, which is really helpful because that's totally what we need to build this information. You can see it right here. We have a total of eight treads and then the actual run width is going to be that dimension, what the actual dimension is. And that's seven foot four. If I look in here, I can see, yep, there's my seven foot four. So all the information is there for us. We just want to use a little bit of uh, dynamo's help to put this together. So if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Also consider subscribing because that does too. Okay. So we're going to go over to Dynamo. There is a, a lot that we'll ultimately do, but what I'm going to ultimately do is end up cutting in and out and I'll speed the video up and whatnot. And we can see where we are as we end up building this script out. And so where am I right now? Well, uh, let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. And when I run this, I basically get this UI that pops up and says, you know, what are we working with? What do you want to uh, select first? And that is basically the stair run or the rise. Basically, are you in plan view or are you in section view? And that's a matter of up to you to decide. Obviously, you can select both. That's going to mess things up down the road, but uh, we're going to just select one and we'll select run, stair runs. And the reason it looks like this is because that's the actual name in the element in Revit, stairs colon runs and we'll select and we can see our result over here is right there stair run so that's that's the next step in saying okay which one do you want and now let's actually work on it so why didn't i use why did i why do i have both of the keys and the values uh, be the same stairs and runs because if i have one and two you can see the result of this is a list of one two the result of this would mean that the items i'm choosing between one and two that doesn't help anyone out so i'm actually having both of these be the keys and the values, which tells you exactly what you need to choose from. So cool. That's where we are in this script. And ultimately what we will do is again, stop periodically. I'm going to keep recording. I will stop periodically, speed things up, and then I'll explain it. I have chunks of code to talk through. So let's go ahead and group this together and call this stair run or stair rise. Okay. And there with stair run or stair rise, that's our selection basically. And with that, I will begin the rest of the script and cut in periodically to explain what it is we're working on. So I will see you in a bit as we work through all of this information. Wonderful.
Okay, I'm to the point where I now have uh, a way of filtering between whether the user chooses stair runs or not, and it's you know run a riser. In this case, we can clearly see that this person shows the stair runs, and that's true. And so we're going to deal with that down the line. But I started with selecting that actual element. So this will, this will be a true input. I went here, and you can see I right click. This is input. So with with the Dyma player, this will show up as input, which is really important because if this is not there, you can't select the element. Therefore, this script won't work and you have to come into Dynamo and do it. So we want this to work with the player. So this is input. So basically, after I choose whether I'm in plan or in section, I then choose the specific stair run. And then I get this. We have number of treads. And so this is all the same node, which is uh, get a specific parameter by name from an element. And that's this parameter name. You can see all these here. We can see the actual number of treads, you know, the number of treads here. I can see, yep, it's eight. And then the tread depth is, of course, in feet only, actual tread depth. And then I've converted that here to 11 inches, which is absolutely beautiful. And then the number of risers, the exact same way. That's going to give me that number of risers. I need to say actual number of risers right there. Actual number of risers, cool. And then actual riser height. That would be that. And we can see there it is. And we also get six and three quarter inches. That's fantastic. This is doing the rounding for us. And I feel really good about this. That's really nice to see. So something to note here is that, of course, I need to name these things correctly because I will not get what I want. In this case, I get the actual number of risers as nine because I actually have this name correctly. We can see here that, yes, all of this data is pulled right from here and it's baked into the stair because it's grayed out. I don't, I can't override that directly. And that's really nice. And so what I've done at this point is now that we filter this down and say, yeah, we want to look at this in plan. We only care about the stair run information or the tread information. I can, I can start to cut this off and say, all right, in this case, we can override this actual dimension by this string value. And then I can, you can see how I can start concatenating these different parameters together uh, to ultimately get us more of what we want, which is going to be something like this. In this case, we're looking for this exactly. So uh, that's really important as well. So let me continue on. I will update you once again as things progress a bit farther. All right, so where we are now is we have corrected this to select the actual stair run, which let's be honest, we needed to do that before the dimension, but we have all this information and we're feeding this into a, let's call it a concatenation string. And so ultimately the result is we get this, which is our number of treads, which I have changed to be a longer stair run to 13. And then we see there obviously still 11 inches. So with all of this put together, the result gives us uh, we're just dealing with all of this information here. We can see the separator is nothing. We have, we've added the spaces in here ourselves. We can see that we're expecting to get uh, 13 T treads at a, whatever value this happens to be equals at 11 inches, of course, yeah, there it is. And you can just see they're in order equals and there's my equals. And then I'm going to take this final value from my actual chosen you can see there's a longer stair run. I want to take this value, 11 feet, 11 inches. So a lot of 11s here. We want to actually see that here on the end. And so here's our final result, which looks really good. 13 treads at 11 inches equals 11 feet, 11 inches. This is fantastic. This is exactly what I need. This is what I want to see. And this is in the format, which is just like this. What we would totally hope to see. So as soon as I connect this here to this dimension that I've selected, this specific one here, as soon as I plug that in here, we should see that completely overridden. So let's hope that happens as soon as I do this here. And look at that. That's cool. That's great. I would, I love to see this. And this is exactly what we need. So all the user had to do and ultimately will have to do, and we're going to try this out in Dynamo Player, of course, to make sure it works, is first decide, well, are you going to go for a stair run dimension or a rise dimension? Basically, are you in plan or section? And then choose your stair run, the physical stair run in the model, not the whole stair, the stair run. We'll get there. 
And then finally select the actual dimension to override. And then you're done. That's really it. It's cool. Okay. And so with that, I've done what we need to for the actual tread, basically in plan. I knew the same thing for the riser. So I will see you in just a minute. And once that is done, we can really test that out in Dynamo Player and we should be off to the races. So I will see you very soon. All right, guys, I am very pleased that this is working well. Okay, so we're gonna test this out and then we can go back to Dynamo and look at it one more time. So let's go ahead and go to our Dynamo player and we can find stair dimensions. And because I have inputs that are actually completely required, uh, nothing will happen, which is awesome. This is totally the way we want. And so now we're literally prompted to select our stair run. Now, of course, you're going to get errors if you don't select a stair run. That's kind of the point here. Uh, we're not trying to account for absolutely everything, but select a stair run. And we will tab from this stair to the stair run itself. And you can see there's my actual run. So I'm going to select that. I can see there's the element. And then I will select my dimension. Now, I haven't made one yet, so let's go ahead and do this. Boom, boom, right there. We can see it's 1111. Select our dimension right there's my dimension okay so we have both of these selected fantastic and at this point i haven't actually while i have pressed the play button i pressed the play button in the actual dynamo library i it was only bringing me to the inputs but now the fact that i have selected all my elements i want to play it and therefore now we are prompted with is this basically a plan view or a section or do we want to look at specifically the stairs rise or stair run so we want to look at the stair run because this is a plan view. So we will select and look at that. That's absolutely everything I need. It's 13 treads at 11 inches equals 11.11. And we can always tab and select this and see. Look at this. There's my 11 inches. I have 13 treads and I'm good to go. It has done everything for me. Now, just to prove that this does work, let's now go to a section view. And, and we want to take this one, for example, let's say... Um, now, the great thing is that I don't have to close Dynamo Player to keep doing this. The idea is that you want to continually do this over and over again, so I can just simply refresh this and I'm immediately back. I don't even have to press play again. So it's cool. We have our select our stair run and we can tab to this particular stair run right there. And then our dimension, I'm going to do this one. And so <laughs> this is something unfortunate that I wish didn't work this way but it's just the unfortunate part of it so if i select this we're good to go you'll see in just a second what i'm displeased about but we can press play and then we are prompted again to choose whether this is a rise or a run well this is a rise because we're in a section view we want to count the number of risers i can select and you can see our issue like really we we have all of this every single string so basically it needs to be a single string so i can simply undo that i want to refresh this and i'm going to actually end up adding a completely separate dimension. Now, I obviously will end up breaking this up. And so you'll have individual dimensions, which isn't that bad. You know, obviously, you're gonna have to do this for each stair run, which is totally fine. It's really quick to do. But you can see that we will get something closer to what we want. Select the stair run and then select our dimension. We'll press play. Choose whether this is a rise or run. It is a rise. Select and look at this. There we go. This is fantastic because we have our nine risers at six and three quarters each equals five and five eighths inches, which is or five feet and five eighths inches, which is fantastic. Now, there is some format and you can work out here and maybe I'll go to the trouble of that. Maybe not, but we can look in here and we can see this is totally what I would expect to see. And so I've got my number of risers is nine and they are thankfully i have figured out a great way to round this to six and three quarters and this is my dimension and my dimension of course is this one here five and five eighths inches which is great i love this so much okay 
So that well, let's go back to Dynamo one more time and look at this. And before I end up saying this is completely done and finished, I will probably end up working with some of this formatting with the final result of this dimension because yeah, we want it to look a little bit better than this. So let's close the Dynamo player and we can see what we've done here. Well, we have received all of our information here at the beginning, which technically is in the beginning. If you remember, we're choosing our stair run or stair rise. I might end up changing um, some of these. Basically, are you in a plan view or in a section view? And then that is checking against the fact that it is, it is one or the other. And if it's one or the other, based on the selection, that is fed all the way to an if statement. And basically, the result is it's true or it's false, which means is it a stair run or is it a stair rise? And that means we only get one result from the dimension being overridden. And so what are we doing here? We saw this before. There's my fancy rounding. Uh, but the stair rise is just, in fact, the same as the stair run. It's generating the exact same uh, type of override for the dimension, but just using different specific riser information from the stair run itself. And, and so ultimately, the user selection is determining which of these will be the ultimate output of the dimension override. And obviously, we can see there's our unselected stair run and there are unselected dimension. And that's just because we want to make this work with the Dynamo player, of course. The nice thing about this now is if you didn't care about the Dynamo player and you wanted to run this just through Dynamo itself, you can just simply select it from here and move on. It's really easy that way. So cool. So at this point, I am going to clean up my final dimension, but and that's just going to be before I end up uploading it to my website. So just so you know, you can always find these Dynamo scripts on my website for download. And this one will be for free. Don't worry about that. Again, the link will be in the description. So look for that for sure. Um, let me know if you like something like this. This to me is something I've done a lot because I've done, I've documented a lot of stairs and I've, I've had to go through this. Uh, believe me, I've always had to have that feet to inches calculator ready because we get decimal somewhere. We get uh, ridiculous 256. And so I, you're constantly trying to figure out, oh, what's the closest eighth rounding? Well, if this script will do it for you. This is totally easy, really easy to do that. And something I'm definitely going to use a lot moving forward when I'm documenting stairs, because I'm going to do it a lot. I promise you. It's very simple, but nonetheless, really helpful in the end. So if you happen to learn something or you just enjoyed the video, please demolish that like button. It helps me out quite a lot. And obviously you can download the script in the description if you want to as well. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.